Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. So today I'm going to do more of a devlog style video and show you how I made this DAW interaction kit, which is going on the Unity Asset Store, and how I used ChatGPT to help me just start putting this together more quickly, automating the ways I'd write different scripts or say custom editors. So fundamentally the way it works now is you've got a piece of text when you highlight over a door, which you can set, you can open, and close the door that you have. You can actually set delays on the actual sound effects and you can select how fast it should open and how fast it should close. In other instances, if it's locked, you do get a prompt at the bottom which says that it's locked, it fades out, which is similar to some functionality that I used in my text inspection system, which I've just released to the Unity Asset Store. Then you would need to collect a key to get into this basement. So in this example, you would go to the basement key and you'd be able to collect it and then you can left click to put the key in with all sound effects you can customize and then be able to open the door and close it again as if it was fine. Again, you could do that with all of the objects, but in this one here, I wanted functionality to have planks. So then you'd be blocking the door from being used because it's blocked by the usage of planks. So you can remove those each with sound effects. And in this case, the shack's still locked. So we need the specific key. And I did create an inventory to hold these in there and you can choose to remove it if that is the case. Use it on lockers or something else. And also be able to use or lock drawers. So you'd be able to have functionality to open and close these. And with the same functionality to share across doors, lockers or drawers. So you could ask me how this started out. Now in 2020 or 2021, I created a free version of the door interaction kit and I made tutorials on it. And this had simple ways to open doors, use buttons and other things like that. And this was kind of a base and I wanted to improve every single part of this. So first of all, when I started, I always try and add the similar level of functionality between all of my assets. So in this case, I had an audio manager which controls all the audios. And these are on scriptable objects, so you can be able to customize those in one place in the project panel without you having to go around different audio sources and to be able to affect that. Now, originally my script to be able to control the door, it had a way to play the animations and pause before you can play the next animation. But it had no way to play sound effects or delay the sound of sound effects. Because sometimes when you open a door, you don't want the sound effect to play instantly because you would have to match your sound effects to the exact time that the door plays the animation or whatever you want that to be. So I'm using ChatGPT4 and I already had an audio manager script which manages my audio. Now Unity's default audio source function has a method built in to delay audio being created. So I asked ChatGPT, I want something that delays audio and it suggested that we could use a coroutine to play the sound in a delayed format. So it has, it created me a method for the sound and the amount of delay and it'll just run a coroutine and delayed that for the seconds before we did the exact same functionality. But then also, because it wouldn't have been instantly obvious to me that it did suggest that this uses a wait for seconds in real time and not in game time. So if your game gets paused, you would have an issue that it suggested that it'd be a good thing to stop any previous playing audios if one was already started, just so that you don't get lots of audio effects all at once. So it created a dictionary with the sound and the coroutine and have the sounds delay. And then when we play the sound, this checks if there's already a delay and then it stops the sound by stopping the coroutine. But if not, you can start the delay and start the delayed audio effect. So then simply, all we needed to do in my case now is have the audio manager set play. We Like before, we can set the scriptable object sound effect, but we can delay it now for two seconds if we wish. Then I asked ChatGPT like to look at my original script and I wanted an optimization because I didn't originally think that I wanted to change from an animation based system. So it took it and did some basic suggestions to be able to check a warning if the component or the animator wasn't available and to be able to just tweak how we check for whether something is true or false and then be able to play an outcome. Then I wanted an intermediate script which will go from my Raycast to this intermediate script, whether we have a key or a door or anything that we might want in the future. I'd already sort of created a base to this by suggesting here's my code, 
with an object interaction method, but can you create me an enum? And this is one of the things that's great for using AI to just quickly put it together. So it created just a simple enum for me and then sort of filled in some basic criteria just so I could get started. In the next instance, I wanted to look at creating locked settings. So I asked specifically in my current script, I wanted some functionality to set a Boolean in the inspector to say, to suggest if something's locked. I wanted to also add a sound effect that when it's locked, you can show something. And also I wanted to show some text. And then it said that if it is locked, we're going to play a sound effect and we're going to show the game object, which is the text that we're going to have. Now, in my next question, I thought myself, this is not very reusable because if it stores with animations, they might not share the exact animation values. It's not easy to get into. So I wanted a very specific scenario where I could actually control the opening speed, the opening angle, and any other parameters that the AI might suggest that is often important to control a door. So it came up with suggesting open angle, open speed, close speed, and the specific door direction. And do be sure to check out the video that I created just a few days ago, which was about the new Humble Bundle where you can get some awesome assets that I've actually never seen featured in bundles before. You can also check out the new Unity sale and the free asset from the Unity Weekly Publisher sort of giveaway, and I'll put all the links down below for you too. Then when we have the interaction, we're going to say that is opening or is closing if we've selected it. And then the update method will say that if opening, we will blurp the actual object and do it by angle and then rotate the object around and do the same with the sort of same values, depending on what we've done for the opening and closing rotations. Now the AI wanted to use a lerp, so I just suggested would slurp be better in this situation because that's using spherical interpolation to make it more of a smooth effect. So they did say that there was the caveated it with a slightly higher overhead to be able to use it. And sometimes the AI will forget what you were doing previously or some lines of code. So I have that if it's opening, we add in the delays for the sound and playing the sound and continuing the core routine that I currently had at this moment in time. And then I wanted a little check to see that if the door was opening or closing, that I don't want to be able to do the functionality to open or close because I don't want to interrupt it while it was doing its current process. So that in this case, in the actual interaction section of the method is if it's e either opening or closing, just return and don't do anything below. Now, I already had some functionality which actually let me add or remove keys from a list, which is just a list here for keys that we want to collect. And then these are all scriptable objects. And then in my UI manager, I wanted to add or remove keys from a particular slot. So in my door controller, I said that if the door's locked, we need to be able to check in the imagery if it contains the scriptable object specifically what they were looking for. And if we take a box to remove the key after use, we're going to remove that from the actual list of keys we currently have. And then is locked will be false. And if any other things happen, we'll play the locked door sound and show a locked prompt. Now, I wanted a quick idea. Rather than having predetermined slots in my imagery, you can ask the AI specific ways of how to create more of a dynamic imagery. So I have actual slots which will appear in a dynamic list, whether that's a scroll view or something, a horizontal layout group. So in the end, I settled on just an imagery panel which will appear at the bottom, which just has a grid layout group. So if I added anything to this grid layout group, like these images here, then it will just formulate it perfectly in however many I add and it would spawn a key inventory slot prefab which I'd created here depending on what your key looks like and it would fill this just image box with the sprite that you have and it would change the name based on what we have it went through a couple of different iterations but it's still the same kind of functionality so in this case, we needed to specify the imagery panel and the slot parent, and then we just instantiate that prefab at the slot parents transform. Then I asked about if we're unlocking at any point and we unlock it with the key when we left click, we'll play the unlock sound and then start the core routine to actually unlock the door. And then I wanted to specify a time before I was able to interact again with is locked or is unlocking 
because I wanted to wait the length of the audio clip before I could start interacting. So then you didn't just unlock it and instantly open the door because it looks kind of janky. And then what I wanted was a script to be able to control exactly how the inventory slot should appear depending on if we want to add an image or more text. So we have a specific script which goes on each inventory prefab so then we can specify the sprite or the text slot for it to go into so we can just modify the components of this script without actually having to modify every time. So I made sure I created some scriptable objects for keys just with a simple scriptable object script to be able to control the sprite and the actual key name with some public properties to be able to set those. Then in my door controller or door interactable script, which I named it to, I took one of my custom editor scripts, which I've created for other assets. And I said to the AI, in this sort of style, write me with all these fields that I've got, write me a custom editor. Now, this is a bit of a long winded process, usually might take you 10, 20 minutes to write it out and sort of formulate it together. But I, you can just ask it to put a sort of generic one together, then you can get the inspector looking how you like it. I like some headings with the sections pretty much segmented across. Of course, this takes some trial and error. Now I wanted specific functionality for the, whether it's a draw or a doll. Now I said, you know, add me some functionality to be, I want to control the slide distance, the closed or the open position and how that should be. Then the problem was that the draw opened left or right, depending on the pivot location. Now I said that I need to be able to specify the direction that it should go in at any time with a more user friendly way. So it created some directions, whether it's forward, up, down, left and right, because I suggested we could just use vector three in a direction rather than specifying a specific value that it should move or direction it should move in. So then anybody could use it. Then I said that I want to add some close and opening speeds because that would be important to be able to specify the speed. Now I wanted a way to spawn objects within draws. So we can just set a spawn point, which is specific to where that needs to be, which we can specify that with an empty game object, a prefab that we want to spawn, and then we can just run a method, but I wanted it on a specific Unity event. So I created that myself. Then I suggested that if we'd already spawned items, I don't want to spawn them again. So then we just create a simple Boolean check to say that if items have been spawned, we don't need to do that again because we don't want to create multiple instances every time we open a draw. And then I wanted some basic functionality of when planks are over a doll. So it came up with the suggestion of specifying how many planks to be able to specify the text of what I wanted to show. And then in the check DOM method, we say that if the planks are greater than zero at any time, we will update the text and say, is blocked by planks if we select the door. And if we choose to remove the planks, then we're going to, as long as they're above zero, we'll reduce the count. And if it equals zero, you can do something else. And in the other context that we needed to create a script and it suggested to use an event, but I wasn't really concerned about the event particularly. So I just created a method which, which was to select the door object, which has the sort of interactable script and it removes a plank every time we click it. And if we remove a plank, we're going to play a sound effect and get rid of the game object. I did also have a script, which is for key pickups. So when we specify whether it's a key, it adds it to the inventory, plays a sound and does the exact same thing. In the UI manager, this was something that I specifically created to set the actual prompts that will appear. So when you go to a locked door, it's going to show the string. We can show the name, which would be what we wanted to show when we highlight over a door. We'll clear the door text when we fade in and fade out. We have a coroutine, which fades the, the UI in or out, depending on based on some smooth alpha value. So we get a nice fades in and fades out. We update the inventory slots or remove something from the inventory slots and uh, control it here in the UI sense because it updates it on screen and then ways to just open the inventory, which is show the panel and update the crosshair. 
And then I used an asset called the Rapid Icon, which allows you to select any prefabs that you've got or maybe models you've got in your assets and create actual icon images from them. I wanted these to be images that you can use in the AI so you can actually rotate the object or position it in a different place. You can set the camera settings so you can rotate and do different things like that to set how you want your thumbnails to look. So I might want my thumbnail or my little image icon to look like that. You can adjust the lighting, the animation, any post-processing, then you can just export it and you can just give the export name as anything you want. So I'll just call this test.png and I'm going to export the icon. And then when you go to your exports folder, you get the exact icon you want to be able to use in the inventory. So I had in my package all the keys there with icons that I created using the rapid icon tool. Because in my example, all my objects have a door item script, which you can specify whether they're a door, a key or a plank. And then you can show the name and set the name of it. You can set the key collectible, which needs a scriptable object. You can recreate this in, in as many times as you want for as many different keys. If you want a door, you specify with a door item. You can specify to use that it is a door. You can use the door type or the draw type. Then you can set the transform of it the open angle and everything that we discussed, the delays for the sound, whether you use any planks, whether it's locked or not to set the lock text, and then whether you want to spawn items, which is just a Unity event. And because we have a custom editor, you can see that it changes the options that we have. So we can set how the draw should open. We can set the slide distance, the opening speed, closing speed, any delays on the sound, the sound effects we use, and then the inventory just has the key and it keeps a list of all the keys we have. The UI manager has everything that we want to have for the UI and also the audio manager has everything that we want to create there. So be sure to check out my Patreon to get access to over 190 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else and check out the great sales on the Unity Asset Store and all of the best links for game dev in the description. So thank you to all my patrons, but a special thank you to Peter Steiner and Christian Van Ziel for their amazing support and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.